There was, of course, no way of knowing whether you were being watched at any given moment. How often, or on what system, the thought police plugged in on any individual wire was guesswork. It was even conceivable that they watched everybody all the time. But at any rate, they could plug in your wire whenever they wanted to. You had to live, did live, from habit that became instinct, in the assumption that every sound you made was overheard, and, except in darkness, every movement scrutinized. I don't want our populace to live in fear of its government. The government should fear the people. Yeah. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cassie. And I just read this quote, and um, it's scary. <laughs> so I'm going to read it to you. On coins, on stamps, on the covers of books, on banners, on posters, and on the wrapping of a cigarette packet, everywhere, always the eyes watching you and the voice enveloping you, asleep or awake, working or eating, indoors or out of the doors, in the bath or in the bed, no escape. Nothing was your own except for the few cubic centimeters inside your skull. That's a pretty scary world to live in and I I would hate to uh, continue to leave, live in that type of world. Thank you. Thank you. Hey everybody, I'm Ronnie. Closer? All right. Don't you see that the whole aim of new speak is to narrow the range of thought? In the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible because there will be no words in which to express it. Every concept that can ever be needed will be expressed by exactly one word, with its meaning rigidly defined and all its subsidiary meanings rubbed out and forgotten. I'm here because privacy is our right. Thanks. Uh, by the way, there's a couple clipboards going around. If you want to help this movement grow and sign up, look for the clipboards and please sign up and put your email. <laughs> if you, you know, I think you can trust these people. Um, this reminds me of the uh, frogs boiling metaphor, which I think we all know has been happening since uh, Reagan got elected, if not before. How could you tell how much of it was lies? It might be true that the average human being was better off now than he had been before the revolution. The only evidence to the contrary was the mute protest in your own bones, the instinctive feeling that the conditions you lived in were intolerable and that at some other time they must have been different. Now's your chance to get back to what it used to be. Thank you. I read this book in high school. The quote that most interests me is, is uh, one that was read first, that the main character has to learn how to mask his face because the technology can read from his facial expressions his thoughts and accuse him of a thought crime. This quote is different, very short. Everything faded into mist. The past was erased. The erasure was forgotten. The lie became truth. Hello, everyone. I'm Joseph Brenner, and I think if we're going to have a transparent society, we need a transparent government, and that is now what we're getting. Within 20 years at the most, he reflected, the huge and simple question, was life better before the revolution than it is now, would have ceased once and for all to be answerable. 
But in effect, it was unanswerable even now, since the few scattered survivors from the ancient world were incapable of comparing one age with another. They remembered a million useless things, a quarrel with a workmate, a hunt for a lost bicycle pump, the expression on a long dead sister's face, the swirls of dust on a windy morning 70 years ago. But all the relevant facts were outside the range of their vision. They were like the ant, which can see small objects but not large ones. And when the memory failed and written records were falsified, when that happened, the claim of the party to have improved the conditions of human life had got to be accepted because there did not exist and never again could exist any standard against which it could be tested. Once, when he happened in some connection to mention the war against Eurasia, she startled him by saying casually that in her opinion the war was not happening. The rocket bombs which fell daily on London were probably fired by the government of Oceania itself just to keep people frightened. This was an idea that literally never occurred to him. And unfortunately, it hasn't occurred to enough of us. We're already in Syria, another example of how we're all being distracted away from what's really important here. And I'm so pleased to see people show up for what is important. Kia ora, my name is Gentry Wakem. I am from New Zealand. And I'm not part of the America's Cup Syndicate, but um, I am here in solidarity with this wonderful uh, gathering this afternoon um, against your NSA actions, because this is exactly what happened in Auckland, New Zealand, one week ago when we had 2,000 people out um, marching against the very same legislation which um, entitles the New Zealand government to use their methods to uh, spy on our emails and our, all our communications. So I say kia kaha and good on you. The wonderful prescience words of George Orwell, and I compliment the people here for uh, pulling these quotes out is a wonderful way to remind us just how important these writers are. He says, The empirical method of thought on which all the scientific achievements of the past were founded is opposed to the most fundamental pr principles of INSOC, and even technological progress only happens when its products can in some way be used for the diminution of human liberty. And another brief quote adding on to that, the two aims of the party are to conquer the whole surface of the earth and to extinguish once and for all the possibility of independent thought. So this is so essential, challenge at every turn of the screw, the entitlement to be independent and to be free in our own homes and, and uh, workplaces. So, kia kaha. Thank you. How you doing? My name is Steve. I'm gonna try to cool this hot mic a little bit. Okay. All rulers of all ages have tried to impose a false view of the world upon their followers. Very true. The history is his story. Thank you. Hey everybody, my name's Alan. It's great to see everybody here. Thanks for coming. Uh, my quote is very succinct. Uh, it's from the book 1984 by George Orwell. It reads, Perhaps a lunatic was simply a minority of one. What that means to me is no matter what the Supreme Court says about the Constitutional Fourth Amendment, we have a right not to be looked at without judicial oversight. Hi, my name 
is Sheila Goldmacher, originally from Brooklyn, New York. And I brought my hero with me today. We cannot forget what he did. Oh, sure. Yeah. And what he is suffering for all of us here today and the millions of Americans who are not here today and don't get it. And I'm reading to you today as a retired librarian and a school teacher who refuses to ban any books, right? And you have to stand with libraries and teachers. I read this book many years ago and I shuddered as a high school student. I'm approaching 80 and I never dreamed I would live to see my country become Orwell's nightmare. So I'm reading something called Freedom is Slavery. Then almost without a pause, he wrote beneath it, two and two make five. But then there came a sort of check. Oh, okay, sorry. I also want to say one more thing. There is an amazing memorial that was built to honor the Abraham Lincoln Brigade, the only international force that ever stood up against fascism in the world. Go see it over there. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is James, I'm from the state of Nevada. I came out here today to talk about the NSA. I'm reading a 1984 quote. For the first time, he perceived that if you want to keep a secret, you must also hide it from yourself. You must know all the while that it is there, but until it is needed, you must never let it emerge into your consciousness in any shape that could be given a name. From now onwards, he must not only think right, he must feel right, dream right. And all the while, he must keep his hatred locked up inside him like a ball of matter, which was part of him and yet unconnected with the rest of him, a kind of cyst. I'm here today because this movement is bigger than one party. This movement is bigger than one ideology. This is an American amendment. The, Ameri the Fourth Amendment is not a Republican amendment. It is not a Democrat amendment. It is, an it is an amendment for the American people. And it makes me very happy to see people from all walks of life out here today to protest this. Thank you very much. James Newcomb. All right. Uh, I hope everyone uh, is able to appreciate these quotes. I think this book is uh, very important, and it's very ironic that we're able to celebrate it on 8-4. Uh, so I have one last quote for everyone. I, I, uh, this is one of my favorite ones in the book. Um, so, 1984. <laughs> George Orwell wrote it. Uh, okay, so the quote goes, The party seeks power entirely for its own sake. Oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. All right, here we go. The party did not seek power for its own ends, but only for the good of the majority. That it sought power because men in mass were frail, cowardly creatures who could not endure liberty or face the truth and must be ruled over and systematically deceived by others who were stronger than themselves. That the choice for mankind lay between freedom and happiness, and that happiness was better. That the party was the eternal, was the internal, the eternal guardian of the weak, a dedicated sect doing evil that good might come. Thank you.
now that now that we're done with quotes, my name is Daniel Ressler, and I'm an engineer in the Bay Area. And just to kind of switch it up, I thought I'd read an article from the Washington Post that was published on July 25th. There's been a lot of speculation. Okay, the title is, NSA snooping is hurting U.S. tech companies' bottom line. There's been a lot of speculation that the revelations about the NSA surveillance program PRISM damaged the credibility of U.S. tech companies, especially international clients who were the primary targets of the snooping operation. But now it is starting to look like snooping is hitting the U.S.-based cloud providers where it really hurts, their pocketbooks. Computer World UK reports a recent Cloud Security Alliance survey found that 10% of the 200 officials at non-U.S. cloud companies have already canceled their contracts with U.S. providers after the leaks, and 56%, that's a majority, of non-U.S. respondents are now hesitant to work with U.S.-based cloud providers. This is bad news for U.S. tech companies because cloud computing and storage is a huge expanding market. Research firm Gartner forecasts that the public cloud services market will grow 18.5% in 2013 to a total of $131 billion worldwide. The NSA surveillance program is not just about the unconstitutionality, even though I think that is the most important thing. It is about jobs here in California. And part of the conversation that I think should be included with uh, fighting these programs is an economic argument. Thank you. Hi, so I'm a lawyer, can you tell? I came in costume today because I dress up for court. I thought I would dress up for this and for the Fourth Amendment. There have been a lot of quotes from 1984 today a work of fiction that we're scared is becoming non-fiction. I want to read, I think, one of the most important non-fiction quotes of our society. And I ask you to listen, mark, and inwardly digest the language of this non-fiction quote to help us guard to ensure that it doesn't become fiction. And this quote is our bedrock security in our society. Because security is the issue today. So listen to what this quote says about security. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. <laughs> Security. And no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched, and the persons or things to be seized. Thank you. My name is Mark Mason, and uh, I'd like to say that, as you all know, the Fourth Amendment protects people against unreasonable searches and seizures, as we just heard, the reading of the exact precise language of the Fourth Amendment. It is a constitutional provision that protects the privacy of the people. We do have a right to privacy. The Bill of Rights limits state power. You would not know that by looking at the Obama administration, the Bush administration, and going back further. I'll say it again. The Constitution and the Bill of Rights actually limit state power. They can't do this. During the past 50 years specifically, the courts have interpreted the Fourth Amendment as to expand the powers of the state to invade the privacy of us, the citizens. While they have been expanding corporate power against worker safety, 
claiming that the Obama administration claims the power to capture and store, as we have seen, all electronic communications and claims the power to search all electronic devices within 100 miles of the border without a warrant. I'll repeat that again. The Obama administration claims that they can inspect your uh, handheld device, anything that you carry that's an electronic device that transfers any kind of electronic communications right now, today, here at Justin Herman Plaza. The police can come in here, grab your smartphone uh, or your tablet and say, we're going to go rifling through it right now, today, at this time and place. They claim that power. While privacy of flesh and blood persons has been attacked, the courts have interpreted Fourth Amendment protections to apply to so-called corporate persons. To apply to so-called corporate persons. Due to recent court decisions, OSHA, the Occupy, or the, sorry, the Occupational and Safety Health Administration, can no longer conduct surprise inspections of dangerous workplaces for the purpose of protecting the lives and health of workers and the public. We saw the explosion of the fertilizer plant in West Texas. Why did that happen? It hadn't been inspected in more than 20 years because OSHA can't go in there. Why? Because corporations have superpowers because they are super persons, if you listen to the Supreme Court. The path this is the Fourth Amendment. It's all about the Fourth Amendment, illegal search and seizures. The path towards restoring the right to privacy for real persons and the path toward protecting the lives and health of workers and the public is for the people to assemble for a purpose of writing a new Bill of Rights, a Bill of Rights 2.0. We cannot rely upon the President or Congress or as we have seen the courts to protect the civil liberties of Americans. We the people can effectively defend our civil liberties, protect our privacy, and protect worker rights by holding nationwide town hall meetings, both real and virtual, for the purpose of establishing modern constitutional protections of citizen privacy. All right, thank you guys all so much for showing up. I just want to give you guys a very quick reminder to keep things peaceful and civil as best as possible. And we hope you can, you can join us later on our march under those terms. Thanks. Hey everyone, I'm Alex. I'm one of the organizers of Restore the Fourth, and we're the group that's putting this event together today. Thanks so much for coming out. Today is all about you. And uh, it really feels good to see everyone here. First off, I'd uh, like you to help me by, uh, if you have a banner, raise it up. Let everyone see it. Because I don't have a speech, and I need the cue cards. So that just hold them, hold them where I can see them. Hey, NSA, we're watching you now. National security extremism. Who's watching the watchers? Uh, these are good questions. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about why we're all here, what this event's about, and uh, why it's so important that everyone here came. Uh, first, this organization that's put this together is uh, really just some regular people. We meet in a sandwich shop in the back of the mall, <laughs> and uh, we saw some bad news. And what we saw in the news, uh, who, here, who here saw the court order demanding all of Horizon's call information. Who read that? That was back in June 6th. <sighs> that hit me like a ton of bricks. You know, my whole life I've been a computer geek, hoodie-wearing uh, nerd, and, and that's, that's how I make a living. I, I work on computers, I do, I do computers. And uh, I've always told people that this technological future that we're building is pretty glorious and it's pretty awesome. And little did I know that it's people like me and, and my tribe who are building the surveillance state. And I felt a special responsibility to take this up. And I couldn't let uh, what I saw in the news go, uh, go without a fight. And uh, that's what, you know, similar stories for other people in Restore the Fourth. We're just regular people. Um, we're crisscrossing the aisle so many times. We look like an Argyle sock. 
you know, you've got libertarians, uh, conservatives, uh, tree huggers, like, we're, we're all in here, and what we are united by is that we believe in liberty, you know? Why are we here? We're here because we've been told by very loud voices that we need to give up our liberty for some security. And who has opposed those voices? Who's opposed those voices have been some lone actors, people who saw some stuff that they didn't like and decided to tell the rest of us about it. And we've tried not doing anything to stand up with them. We've tried that, uh, just sitting at home and angrily commenting on the internet. And that didn't work. <laughs> it's not going to work unless regular, everyday people who've got you know, reasonable lives and, and you know, pretty mainstream opinions say, you know what? I'm not going to let them face this alone. I'm going to stand up with them. We're told, we're told that we have to sacrifice our liberty for our safety. They're telling us that we need to give up our Fourth Amendment rights to win the war on terror. But I'm sorry to say, but the war on terror will never be won under their parameters. It can't be won as long as we put the world on notice that Americans aren't the people they claim to be. If we let the world know that we can be so frightened by terrorists that we will give up our individual liberties, our specific claims to exceptionalism, then they know that terrorism works. How are you going to fight terrorism by proving to the world that it works? So we, this event, what we're, what we're doing here is we're letting our elected representatives know that we're watching. We're asking them to stop fighting the war on terror on the terrorists' behalf. <laughs> Fight it on our behalf. We will never win the war on terrorism until we start listening to that little voice that is speaking inside of us and it's saying some words that have grown pretty dim now. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And there are some people, some amongst us, who've been fighting way out in front of us, way in front of the regular people who have to go to work tomorrow. Uh, they've been fighting this and they just can't turn that voice off. Uh, you know, you, you gotta feel, they're gonna go to the mat fighting for us. And if we don't stand up with them, they're gonna be ground into hamburger. It's up to us to stand up with them. That's why we're here. We're here to show the world that Americans are actually living up to the ideals they say they're about. And we're here for each other. Thank you so much for coming out. We have amazing speakers for you today. They're going to be able to tell you about, like, we have real history makers. And the idea is that, hey, there's sandwich shops and malls all over the country. And we've got Americans all over the country. What more do you need? Get some sandwiches, call up your friends, say, you know what, that crap we saw in the news? We will not let that stand. We will set a precedent for the 21st century that we can have our liberty and our liberties can make us safe. Thank you so much. And uh, I'd like to, uh, let's, get, let's get the thing, let's get this going. Let's get this event going. Hold your banners high. Thank you.
All right, everyone. Um, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce our first speaker, who I've known personally for almost a decade. She's the Director of Civil Liberties at the Center for Internet and Society at Stanford. She's one of the leading legal scholars uh, on technology and the internet and a highly respected voice on legal issues relating to technology and surveillance. Uh, when Aaron Schwartz was indicted for downloading articles from the JSTOR um, database, he reached out to our next speaker for help, and she defended Aaron and challenged the scope of law under which he was persecuted. Uh, she recently published a legal analysis of the ways in which the government is misrepresenting and misinterpreting the Pfizer Amendments Act and the Patriot Act to justify mass surveillance. Uh, that article is in the New York Times, and its title is The Criminal NSA. Um, please join me in giving a warm, warm welcome to Jennifer Granick. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. Today I'm here to tell you that now that we know what the NSA is doing, it's time to demand that our representatives, specifically Nancy Pelosi, stand with us to protect the Fourth Amendment or we're going to vote somebody into office who will. Now we know. Now we know that the NSA is tapping fiber optic cables around the world and inside the United States, giving access to information about everything that everyone does on the Internet. Now we know that the NSA goes directly to companies and gets our emails, our chats, our communications from Google, from Apple, from Microsoft, from Yahoo. And we know that they get this information from Americans to anyone overseas. They can get that information without a warrant. So when they say, we can't read your emails or listen to your phone calls unless we have a warrant, now we know that that was a lie. Now we know that the NSA is collecting phone record information about every single American, who you call and who calls you. And that information is a map of human interactions and can reveal who your friends are, how often you talk to your family, your interactions with doctors, with lawyers, with religious advisors, with strippers, with whomever. And they have that information on every single one of us and have been collecting it for the past seven years. So now we know when James Clapper told the Congress that they don't collect any kind of data on hundreds of millions of Americans, now we know that that was a lie. And now we know that at least until 2011, the NSA collected internet records on all of us very, very revealing information that they collected on all Americans. We don't know where that information is today, but we know that at least until then, they were collecting it. So, now we know that mass surveillance, surveillance, mass surveillance is here. We know that now. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? Now that we know what the NSA is doing, it's time for us to change it. The checks and balances that uh, we've been told are in place to protect us, we now know those don't work. The courts, the secret FISA court approves all the requests for surveillance that come before it. And it makes secret law. It has morphed. It has uh, mutated from a court that used to approve secret targets for surveillance into a court that makes secret interpretations of laws that shock even the legislators who passed those laws. It has mutated into something that makes secret interpretations of the Fourth Amendment that allow warrantless searches so long as the government mouths the word terrorism. That's not a check or balance, and we know that now. Congress is supposed to protect us, but now we know that the people who vote for NSA surveillance get twice as much money from the defense industry as those representatives who fight against it. 
And now we know that those representatives who fight against it don't know, aren't informed what the NSA is doing, and when they ask and they try to find out, they're prohibited from telling us and from telling other legislators under rules about classification and committee proceedings. And now we know that these robust internal protections that the NSA has to make sure that Americans aren't improperly surveilled amount to a user interface with some drop-down menus that have a bunch of pre-approved things that they have to type in there and then they can surveil people without a warrant. That's not a check and balance. So now that we know, it's time to make a change. It's time to make a change because senators and representatives are coming forward and saying, no more. It's time to make a change because former FISA court judges are coming forward and saying the way that this process works is not the best. We can improve this. We can make it better. It's time to make a change because the companies from which the NSA demands information about us are in turn demanding to tell us what kind of information the government collects on us and how often. It's time to make a change because the mainstream press is finally covering this issue. And that coverage is making a difference. Regular people like my mom and dad, now they know and they care. Polls show that in increasing numbers, Americans are changing their mind about government surveillance. And that Americans believe that the NSA is overreaching and that it's time to make a change. And we can make this change. When um, a newspaper asked Senator Wyden, who has been fighting against this for such a long time, why now there's traction to stop NSA's overreaching, he said, members of Congress went home, and in senior citizen centers, company lunchrooms, and all kinds of places where the public gathers, citizens are coming up to their legislators and saying, hey, what's this all this business about the government collecting my phone records. I didn't do anything wrong. What Wyden is telling us is that when we talk to our legislators, it makes a difference. And so now is the time for us to talk to our legislator, Nancy Pelosi, and tell her it's time to make a change. It's time to stand with us for the Fourth Amendment. Now, Representative Pelosi had a chance about a week ago to stand with us. There was an opportunity to end just one small part of what we now know the NSA is doing, the phone record surveillance, collecting phone information on every single one of us and keeping it for five years. There was an amendment that she could have voted for that would have defunded that program. And when time came for Representative Pelosi to vote for that amendment, she did not vote for the amendment. Not only, not only did she vote against it, but the reports were that her efforts to convince other Democrats to vote against it too were the most important reason why that amendment failed. More than anything the administration did, more than what the director of the NSA did on the Hill, it was because Nancy Pelosi went to other Democrats and twisted their arms and say, vote, said, vote against this amendment. Uh, traitor! Barely Traitor! Get a new job, Nancy! You've overserved your turn. Now, in 2005, here's a quote about the law that they say authorizes this phone record surveillance. This law needs a requirement that the government show some connection between the records sought and that the individual is suspected of being a terrorist or spy. Such a standard is needed to ensure that fishing expeditions do not take place and yet this standard is missing. Who said that in 2005? Nancy Pelosi said that. In 2005, she was against the law because of its potential for abuse, and yet in 2013, she failed to strike it down, even though we now have documented information about its abuse, abuse far beyond anything that we could have imagined. She did not stand with us when the time came before, but there will be other opportunities. 
better opportunities for her to end this mass surveillance and other NSA mass surveillance programs. And the question is, will she stand with us then? She has, she has the very real ability to kill mass spying, and we need to tell her that we expect her to do so. So, if Pelosi does not follow through, if she does not use her considerable power to end mass surveillance, then she does not deserve to represent me anymore. And I, I ask you, the people here, and all of your friends, and all of the people in San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi's district, to stand with me, and to ask Nancy Pelosi to stand with us, and to protect the Fourth Amendment, or we're going to find somebody who will. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. Um, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce our first speaker, who I've known personally for almost a decade. She's the Director of Civil Liberties at the Center for Internet and Society at Stanford. She's one of the leading legal scholars uh, on technology and the internet, and a highly respected voice on legal issues relating to technology and surveillance. Uh, when Aaron Schwartz was indicted for downloading articles from the JSTOR um, database, he reached out to our next speaker for help, and she defended Aaron and challenged the scope of law under which he was persecuted. Uh, she recently published a legal analysis of the ways in which the government is misrepresenting and misinterpreting the Pfizer Amendments Act and the Patriot Act to justify mass surveillance. Uh, that article is in the New York Times, and its title is The Criminal NSA. Um, please join me in giving a warm, warm welcome to Jennifer Granick. Hi everybody, thanks for coming out today. Today I'm here to tell you that now that we know what the NSA is doing, it's time to demand that our representatives, specifically Nancy Pelosi, stand with us to protect the Fourth Amendment or we're gonna vote somebody into office who will. Yeah. Now we know. Now we know that the NSA is tapping fiber optic cables around the world and inside the United States, giving access to information about everything that everyone does on the internet. Now we know that the NSA goes directly to companies and gets our emails, our chats, our communications from Google, from Apple, from Microsoft, from Yahoo. And we know that they get this information from Americans to anyone overseas. They can get that information without a warrant. So when they say, we can't read your emails or listen to your phone calls unless we have a warrant, now we know that that was a lie. Now we know that the NSA is collecting phone record information about every single American, who you call and who calls you. And that information is a map of human interactions and can reveal who your friends are, how often you talk to your family, 
your interactions with doctors, with lawyers, with religious advisors, with strippers, with whomever. And they have that information on every single one of us and have been collecting it for the past seven years. So now we know when James Clapper told the Congress that they don't collect any kind of data on hundreds of millions of Americans, now we know that that was a lie. And now we know that at least until 2011, the NSA collected internet records on all of us. Very, very revealing information that they collected on all Americans. We don't know where that information is today, but we know that at least until then, they were collecting it. So now we know that mass surveillance, surveillance, mass surveillance is here. We know that now. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? Now that we know what the NSA is doing, it's time for us to change it. The checks and balances that uh, we've been told are in place to protect us, we now know those don't work. The courts, the secret FISA court approves all the requests for surveillance that come before it. And it makes secret law. It has morphed, it has uh, mutated from a court that used to approve secret targets for surveillance into a court that makes secret interpretations of laws that shock even the legislators who passed those laws. It has mutated into something that makes secret interpretations of the Fourth Amendment that allow warrantless searches so long as the government mouths the word terrorism. That's not a check or balance, and we know that now. Congress is supposed to protect us, but now we know that the people who vote for NSA surveillance get twice as much money from the defense industry as those representatives who fight against it. And now we know that those representatives who fight against it don't know, aren't informed what the NSA is doing, and when they ask and they try to find out, they're prohibited from telling us and from telling other legislators under rules about classification and committee proceedings. And now we know that these robust internal protections that the NSA has to make sure that Americans aren't improperly surveilled amount to a user interface with some drop-down menus that have a bunch of pre-approved things that they have to type in there and then they can surveil people without a warrant. That's not a check and balance. So now that we know it's time to make a change. It's time to make a change because senators and representatives are coming forward and saying, no more. It's time to make a change because former FISA court judges are coming forward and saying, the way that this process works is not the best. We can improve this. We can make it better. It's time to make a change because the companies from which the NSA demands information about us are in turn demanding to tell us what kind of information the government collects on us and how often. It's time to make a change because the mainstream press is finally covering this issue and that coverage is making a difference. Regular people like my mom and dad, now they know and they care. Polls show that in increasing numbers, Americans are changing their mind about government surveillance and that Americans believe that the NSA is overreaching and that it's time to make a change. And we can make this change. When um, a newspaper asked Senator Wyden, who has been fighting against this for such a long time, why now there's traction to stop NSA's overreaching, he said, members of Congress went home and in senior citizen centers, company lunchrooms, and all kinds of places where the public gathers, citizens are coming up to their legislators and saying, hey, what's this, all this business about the government collecting my phone records? I didn't do anything wrong. What Wyden is telling us is that when we talk to our legislators, it makes a difference. And so now is the time for us to talk to our legislator, Nancy Pelosi, and tell her it's time to make a change. It's time to stand with us for the Fourth Amendment. Woo! 
Now, Representative Pelosi had a chance about a week ago to stand with us. There was an opportunity to end just one small part of what we now know the NSA is doing, the phone record surveillance, collecting phone information on every single one of us and keeping it for five years. There was an amendment that she could have voted for that would have defunded that program. And when time came for Representative Pelosi to vote for that amendment, she did not vote for the amendment. Not only, not only did she vote against it, but the reports were that her efforts to convince other Democrats to vote against it too were the most important reason why that amendment failed. More than anything the administration did, more than what the director of the NSA did on the Hill, it was because Nancy Pelosi went to other Democrats and twisted their arms and say, vote, said, vote against this amendment. Traitor! Now in 2005, here's a quote about the law that they say authorizes this phone record surveillance. This law needs a requirement that the government show some connection between the records sought and that the individual is suspected of being a terrorist or spy. Such a standard is needed to ensure that fishing expeditions do not take place and yet this standard is missing. Who said that in 2005? Nancy Pelosi said that. In 2005, she was against the law because of its potential for abuse, and yet in 2013, she failed to strike it down, even though we now have documented information about its abuse, abuse far beyond anything that we could have imagined. She did not stand with us when the time came before, but there will be other opportunities, better opportunities, for her to end this mass surveillance and other NSA mass surveillance programs. And the question is, will she stand with us then? She has, she has the very real ability to kill mass spying, and we need to tell her that we expect her to do so. So, if Pelosi does not follow through, if she does not use her considerable power to end mass surveillance, then she does not deserve to represent me anymore. And I, I ask you, the people here, and all of your friends, and all of the people in San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi's district, to stand with me, and to ask Nancy Pelosi to stand with us, and to protect the Fourth Amendment, or we're going to find somebody who will. Thank you very much.